All right, welcome everyone to 30 Minutes on Wins with God's Precious One. It is promptly 6.30 p.m. on Wednesday night, and I am Bishop M. Precious Fox with Life Impact Church International, joining you online for our weekly online Bible study series from 6.30 p.m. to 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So this week it is Wednesday, June the 17th of 2020, and we are still in a series entitled Resurgence. We're actually in part three of this series on tonight. This kicks us off for that. Uh, as we go through the lesson, we're going to review the purpose, the objectives, the main text, and the series outline. That is our Bible study format. So the purpose of this lesson called Resurgence is to just have a conversation. So the CDC has given recommendations and advice to protect your physical body as we begin the process of resurgence into society's new norm. Uh, you know, I've got the air quotes with my fingers, quote unquote, new norm. Um, therefore, the purpose of this Bible study series is to prepare God's people spiritually for the resurgence, uh, the exodus from isolation. Um, we're coming out of our stay home orders, um, and so that we're calling that the exodus from isolation um, into what we're calling the spiritual new norm. So society has all these new norms for how we ought to behave physically, you know, wearing a mask or washing of hands more frequently. Um, you know, all the different rules and regulations, the personal protection equipment and things that we have to do in order to adjust to uh, coming out from the COVID-19 pandemic. And so as many of us prepare to emerge from this isolation of COVID-19 um, and reintegrate ourselves back into society, there are some spiritual things that we want to make sure that we do not forget. Number one um, spiritual lesson that we learn is that there were some things that God himself cut out of our lives, um, including relationships. Some relationships were lost. Some relationships were gained. Uh, for many of us, uh, the communion with God uh, became more intense. We had this uh, private time with God. Um, the posture of prayer, we don't want to forget that. And we also don't want to forget that God is our source. He is the source of all of our resources. And we don't want to forget that he is our everything in the midst of all this. So what did we learn? We learned that he is our am, I am that I am. He's our healer, our keeper, our provider, our protector, our deliverer, our sustainer, our peace, our joy, our comforter. Uh, he was the one that kept us from going insane and, and becoming depressed. Uh, he was our counselor. We could cry on his shoulder. Um, just everything that we needed, we found God to be that uh, during the midst of this pandemic. He provided for us, made ways for us out of no way, uh, even though the economy uh, was shot and many of us didn't know whether we were still going to have jobs and where how we were going to make ends meet. You know, God just continued to provide all of our needs according to his riches and glory. And so we want to keep the focus on that. Even as we're reemerging back into society, remember that um, our jobs are not necessarily our source. God is our source and the job is just a, a resource, a way that he provides for our families. And so we need to keep focus on God. Matthew 6 and 33 lets us know that we seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. All these things will be added unto us. So keep God first. Keep focus there. Even as you're emerging back out to your jobs, out back into society, keep God first. Um, another thing we want to be mindful of is that we do not want to return to our old ways of doing business. There's no more business as usual uh, back to the way it was before the isolation. So um, even with those of us who have developed our relationship with God, we're not going back to religion. We're not going back to the habitual practices. And um, I'm reminded of a quote that I uh, heard a long time ago, and I've always kind of kept that in my mind about what insanity truly is. And um, in the quote, they said that when you continue to do the same things, over and over expecting a different result that that is the mere definition of insanity you keep repeating the same things over and over and then you're expecting that the outcome or the results are going to be different um, that quote says that that's insanity and I've learned uh, through the experience of life that that is very true so um, if you want a different result you want a different outcome you're gonna have to do something that's different and so at this season and in this hour as we're reintegrating back into society's new norm there's no more church as usual there's no more worship as usual because we 
we are no longer practicing religion. We are in relationship and uh, we will not practice insanity. We're not going to repeat the same things over and over and expect a different outcome. We're going to do whatever it takes to get in the presence of God, to stay in the presence of God, to evoke his presence, um, to hear an anointed rhema word from God, uh, whatever it takes to get what we need from the almighty God in this time and in this season, because he's the voice that we need to hear. He's the one that we need to hear from. And he has the words uh, to give us life and life everlasting. So uh, our objectives, number one, we define resurgence. Uh, right now, we're still in objective number two, where we're exploring the biblical examples of David and his experience from the cave of Adullam. Um, that experience, we want to look at it so that we can glean all of the lessons that we need to learn because David himself had to make an exodus from that cave. First, he escaped to the cave in order to get away from um, King Saul, but then he had to make an exodus. He had to leave that cave and go to Judah. And so we want to look at the lessons that he learned from the cave of Adullam so that we, as we're reemerging back into society, can integrate some of those spiritual lessons um, into our own life. And so uh, we move to objective number three, which is reasoning, studying via three specific points, a series with supporting scriptures. And then, of course, four is always going to be a part of our lesson. Sometimes it's four, sometimes it's five, depending on how many objectives we have. But that is the area where you get to participate. So if there's any thing that I say that causes you to have a reflection uh, or if a question is asked in the comment bar uh, and you have the answer we want you to type that information into the box um, because we want you to participate that's what Bible study is all about we want to study and grow together in God's grace so that's your opportunity to participate with us on tonight so our main text came from 1 Samuel 22 verse 1 through 5 1 Samuel 23, verse 1 through 5, and then also verse 9 through 12. And tonight we're picking it up at 1 Samuel 24, verse 1 through 6, verse 12 through 15, and then verses 19 through 22. So get your Bibles. We're going to 1 Samuel 24, 1 through 6, 12 through 15, and 19 through 22. And that's where we're going to start on tonight. So as you see at the very bottom of the screen, um, some of the lessons that we want to glean from David, uh, his escape to the cave of Adullam and then his exodus from the cave to Judah is we want to understand what David's posture was. What was his posture? We want to observe as we're studying the scripture, uh, how he inquired of God, how he, how he asked questions of God before he made any moves and he waited to actually hear from God and when he thought that instructions were not clear or he was not unsure about the instructions he asked again uh, and he waited to hear an answer from God before he moved and it's so important in this season that we do not move without uh, prophetic instruction that we do not move without the the voice of God giving us divine instructions about the directions that we ought to take uh, and the guidance that we need to know where to go how to go uh, when to go uh, in this time and in this season because timing is critical and you need a divine voice to hear the voice of God to lead you and guide you into the path that he has purposed for you in this hour and in this day we also want to observe uh, David's service, how um, sometimes we, we think that when we're in trouble or if we're having a crisis in our lives, that that's the time that we as leaders or as individuals um, don't want to serve anybody else. We think we're supposed to be served during that time. But we'll see that uh, David, that while he was in the cave, while he was being chased, while he was in trouble and, and going through a crisis himself, that that's when God called him to serve others. God called him to serve those others who were discontent and disgruntled and, and unhappy um, with what was happening during that time. And so even though you may be going through and you may be hurting, God may be calling you to still serve and to still serve others. And you need to understand that even though you're hurting, even though you're broken, even though things are not perfect in your life, that there is still an opportunity for you to minister to someone else and to serve someone else even through that crisis. And then finally, um, on tonight, we're going to actually look at the character. So those first two scriptures there, uh, gave us posture, gave us inquiry, and it gave us service. And then that last one uh, really talks about how God used this whole situation between David and Saul to build David's character to prepare him 
He was preparing him to be the king um, that was after God's own heart. He was preparing him to be the king that God chose, not a rejected king, but the king that God chose to lead his people. And, you know, trials, tribulations, adversity, all of those things come to make you strong and they also come to build your character. So we're going to observe David's character and how God used that situation to build his character in the midst of what David was going through. All right, so those are our objectives there, our main text. And then now we're going to go and look at the series outline. So after tonight, we're going to finish our main text scriptures and we're going to start actually going into that series outline. Number one, when we get to the series outline, we want to talk about um, posture and inquiry and, and what happened when David was in the cave. So we know that David wrote uh, at least three Psalms, uh, according to historians, are attributed to the time that David was in the cave. And those three Psalms that he wrote are indicative or reflective of uh, David's posture during that time. So one of them is reflective of him being on his face, then moving from his face to his knees, and then moving from his knees to his feet. And so we know that as we have gone through um, this pandemic, uh, many of us have changed our posture before God. And as we're leaving um, this isolation and going back out into society, we don't want to forget the posture on the face. We don't want to forget the posture on the knees. And we don't want to forget the posture on your feet either. And so we'll talk some more about that as we get to that series outline. And then we'll talk again about number two, which is ministry how we're called to serve and to lead others even when we're broken and then finally we'll talk about character building who are we when there is no one watching <laughs> who are we when there is no one there um, that is willing to hold us accountable but God you know because God is always watching God is always there he always sees and so who are we when when there's no one there to hold us accountable are we the the same person as our character maintained um, when no one else is watching or when we think no one else is watching do we maintain our character as we move into our series outline we're going to focus on things like how a uh, crisis uh, drives you into a posture where you're willing to do anything like by any means necessary whatever I need to do to make ends meet whatever I need to do to get in the presence of God and and we don't want uh, that kind of attitude to be something that only comes when you're in crisis we've got to get to a place where we stop seeking God's hand and instead we seek his face and trust and know that he who be began a good work in us will continue that work until the end and that it is no longer about meeting God uh, just for a need in other words meeting him for prayer just for a need but it's about meeting him in prayer to maintain the covenant relationship that you've developed it's, it's not that you're just meeting him because you need something from him you're meeting him because of the relationship that you've developed and you want to maintain that relationship um, that you created and you develop with God in the midst of the crisis all right so we defined resurgence already uh, I just want to highlight the bottom one um, that's on this slide. We know that resurgence is the an increase or a revival after a period of little activity. Um, you know, coming back, you're returning to power. It's a new start. It's a rising again into life or activities or prominence. And as it's been defined uh, for this lesson, it is our exodus from isolation. It is this mass departure from the stay home orders of COVID-19 pandemic where we're reemerging um, into societies uh, what we call the new norm because th nothing is as it was before so you've seen this slide before these are our main text scriptures and so I'm asking you now because we're going to move very quickly into 1 Samuel 24 and we're going to start right at verse 1 so hopefully you've got your Bibles and are ready to dig in all right 1 Samuel chapter 24 verse 1 reads as thus and it came to pass when Saul was returned from following the Philistines that it was told him, saying, Behold, David is in the wilderness of En Gedi. So we know that Saul is chasing after David. Um, we started out uh, in Gath, uh, where the Philistines were. David escaped from there, and then he went on to the cave of Adullam. Then we see him exiting the cave of Adullam, going out um, into Judah. 
uh, going to save Kila. And then now we find uh, he escapes from Kala because, of course, Saul finds out that he's there. And we're in chapter 24 here now where Saul has heard another word um, that where David is, where he is. He's in the wilderness in En Gedi and he is still chasing after David. That jealousy is driving him to chase after David. And then in verse 2 it says, Then Saul took 3,000 chosen men out of Israel and went to seek David and his men upon the rocks of the wild goats. Verse 3 says, And he came to the sheep coats, by the way, where was a cave. And Saul went in to cover his feet. And David and his men remained in the sides of the cave. Now imagine, if you will, um, these huge caves of biblical times, according to historians, uh, had multiple entrances. And so you could enter in one way and go out another um, it had the multiple entrances, like, you know, one on the front end, the back end might have been a, a top down uh, or coming up from the bottom of the mountain and climbing up in. And uh, historians say that uh, these caves had these multiple entrances. And once you got inside, some of them had high ceilings. Uh, we know that the cave of Adullam was big enough uh, for David's family and uh, 400 uh, soldiers or men that came to him uh, that were disgruntled. We found that out in 1 Samuel chapter 22. And so we know this had to be a pretty huge cave. And so Saul goes into a cave to cover his feet. And the scripture tells us that David and his men were hiding in these same caves. Verse 4, he says, And the men of David said unto him, Behold, the day of which the Lord said unto thee, Behold, I will deliver thine enemy into thine hand, that thou mayest do to him as it shall seem good to thee. Then David arose and cut off the skirt of Saul's robe privately. All right, let's stop right there. So many of us, when, when God delivers our enemies into our hand, what is our, our response going to be? You know, we shout, we, we speak in tongues, uh, uh, some of us, we'd be gloating and dancing and, um, you know, just in this place of pride or this place of um, uh, one, you're rejoicing because God has answered your prayer. A and then in another, uh, you, you know, instead of your enemy being able to come at you and to destroy you, here it is. God has delivered them into your hand. But we're going to see something very special about David's character here because his character was being tested. So even though a God delivered Saul into David's hand, David's character would not allow him to kill the king. The, the king that was chosen by the people, even though he was God's chosen king. Verse 5 says, And it came to pass afterward that David's heart smote him. One, not only did he just, he, he could have done way more than just cut off his skirt. He could have taken that as an opportunity um, to say, oh, God delivered my enemy into my hand. Let me cut off the head of the snake right now. And then I won't have to worry about running anymore. But imagine, you know, David, this is his father-in-law. He's married to uh, one of David's, um, one of Saul's daughters. This, so this is his father-in-law. Um, also, David and Jonathan, who is Saul's father, have this tight relationship Excuse me, I'm saying it backwards. <laughs> Jonathan is Saul's son. <laughs> Forgive me, I'm getting excited about the word of God. So Jonathan is David's son, and they have this, this relationship, and I'm still saying it wrong. <laughs> Jonathan is Saul's son. <laughs> there we go. And, and David and Jonathan have this relationship where he loves him. And so he can't, he can't slay his father-in-law. He can't slay the father of, of his best friend, his soulmate, Jonathan. And so we find it here uh, in verse 5 that his heart began to trouble him. Look at his character there that he's expressing before us. Uh, he cut off his skirt or part of his skirt privately, um, yet his heart began to smote him because he cut off Saul's skirt. And in verse 6 it says, And he said unto his men, The Lord forbid that I should do this thing unto my master, the Lord's anointed, to stretch forth mine hand against him, seeing he is the anointed of the Lord. And so that was an opportunity 
for God to truly see what type of character David had. And as we are exiting from the cave, uh, ag exiting from this isolation of the pandemic, um, while we were in, in isolation, many of our characters were tested. Many marriages were tested. Relationships were tested. Um, to see what type of character we have, you know, what is that marriage made of if um, the two of you can only get along when you only see each other like roommates, um, when you come home and you go to, you know, you eat like roommates, you go to bed and then you get up and then you don't see each other anymore. And now all of a sudden you're in this situation where you're together all the time. <laughs> uh, a lot of people found out that they didn't know their uh, partners or their, their mates, or spouses anymore. Um, that they really didn't have anything in common, that they were functioning as roommates. And so this presented an opportunity for many marriages to come back together, um, to learn one another again, to grow. And um, we're also finding that a lot of people, their marriages uh, suffered uh, great loss during this time. And so we're praying uh, not only for the marriages, but then you had uh, the parents and their children, you know, we send them to school and we're not dealing with them for eight hours a day. And so we're not seeing all of the things that the teachers may have been talking about um, with our children being hyper and, and different things that they may do and have gotten away with during the day. And so we're finding out um, some of the character flaws in our children, uh, some of the character flaws in us. And so there were lots of opportunities while we were uh, isolated for us to really examine our uh, character to see whether we were in right standing uh, with the Word of God and to bring our characters into alignment with the Word of God before we resurge and integrate back into society's new norm. So what did we gain uh, with our families? Uh, many of us, we gained a lot of face-to-face uh, -face time for dinner. Uh, we gained time uh, to actually play some games together um, to learn the character, the personalities of our family members who may live in the same home, but because of works and crazy schedules and school and everything else that we had going on, we really didn't uh, know each other. And so this gave us an opportunity to get to know each other and spend quality time together. And so those are some things that we want to hold on to. That even as we're emerging back into society, um, those good things that we've gained from being in isolation, we want to hold on to those things. Hold on to that quality time. Hold on to that dinner time together, the, the, the walks outside, the reading together, the, the studying, whatever you did um, that forged those relationships and, and quantified those relationships and really showed you the good, the bad, and the ugly of your character um, that caused you to change those things and to build certain areas of your character. You want to hold on to those things. Hold on to the good. Uh, how do they say you eat the meat and spit out the bones? <laughs> Um, and, and what David did is he found that while he was in that cave, he had an opportunity to destroy his enemy, but his heart would not allow him. This is one of the reasons why he was a man after God's own heart. He couldn't do it. And, and he felt guilty even about just cutting off the skirt of Saul because he touched God's anointed. And, and even when our leaders uh, mess up, just looking at another example, um, it's not our jobs to cut them down and to try to put them in their place. They're still God's anointed. And Lord forbid that we would put our mouth on them, that we would put our hand on them um, uh, because they're God's anointed. And because they're God's anointed, our job is to lift them up in prayer. Um, if we are the one that is chosen to go to them and talk to them in meekness and in humility, considering our own selves, then we ought to do that. Um, but it is not our jobs to tear our, our leaders down or to tear down even um, anyone who is God's anointed. They might not necessarily be a leader, but they could be anointed as God's children and as children of the Most High God. So then in verse 12 is where we're picking it up now. Um, chapter 24, verse 12 through 15, it says, The Lord judge between me and thee, and the Lord avenge me of thee but mine hand shall not be upon thee. So this is David um, responding back to Saul, letting him know that, you know, God delivered you into my hand. Um, he avenged me. He, he sent you there and I could have, I could have killed you um, because he provided me with an opportunity to avenge. Um, he said, but my hand is not going to be upon thee, you know, that you are God's anointed. And even though God avenged me by providing me with an opportunity to kill my enemy, bringing the enemy to me, 
um, enemy didn't even know I was there. I could cut off his skirt and, and uh, be so close to you. Um, yet I did not kill you. Um, and, and so you need to understand that I had an opportunity to kill you, but I didn't. I did not kill you. And then he goes on in verse 13 to say, As saith the proverb of the ancients, Wickedness proceeded from the wicked, but mine hand shall not be upon thee. Verse 14 says, After whom is the king of Israel come out? After whom dost thou pursue? After a dead dog? After a flea? He said, The Lord therefore be judge, and judge between me and thee, and see, and plead my cause, and deliver me out of thine hand. And so David is just reasoning here with Saul. He's like, I had an opportunity to kill you, but I didn't do it, so that you could understand that I really have no hatred, malice, envy, no, no evil in my heart towards you, Saul. And so the Lord judged between the two of us, and the Lord plead my cause, because I had an opportunity to kill you. My character would not allow me to do it, and, and I was unable to do that. And so look at my character. I'm not the one that's trying to kill you. I am not uh, trying to take your kingdom. If I was, I had an opportunity to do it, but I did not do it. And so the Lord judged between you and I that when I had an opportunity, my character, my love for you as king and as God's anointed would not allow me to do it. And so that was the character um, that God was building. And, and look at David's heart. Um, and how God was using him um, despite the fact that he could have slain his enemy because he was delivered and God himself delivered him there. But David's character withstood that test and he did not slay or destroy Saul, who was God's anointed uh, king over Israel at that time. So then verse uh, 19 through 22 is where our scripture ends here tonight. It says, for if a man find his enemy, Will he let him go well away? Wherefore the Lord reward thee good for that thou hast done unto me this day. And so this, of course, is Saul's answer back to David, letting him know, um, you know, normally when a man finds his enemy, he kills his enemy. But you let me go away. And, and the Lord is the judge between us. And now he's saying to David, the Lord reward you for your good, for the good character that you displayed. Uh, for the good that you showed toward me, even though I was chasing you to kill you. And then this is where we see Saul finally acknowledging that uh, God himself has anointed David to be king over all of Israel. So in verse 20, he says, And now, behold, I know well that thou shalt surely be king, and that the kingdom of Israel shall be established in thine hand. Verse 21 says, Swear now therefore unto me by the Lord that thou will not cut off my seed after me and that thou will not destroy my name out of my father's house. Finally, verse 22 says, And David swear unto Saul, and Saul went home. And so we see that, um, you know, he was able to, um, this, this chase that was going between him and Saul, Saul chasing him down with uh, this jealousy, um, ceased here in uh, chapter 24 verse 22 Saul went home and David and his men got them up unto the hold so David those went back they still went back into the stronghold uh, which we know is are the caves and at this point it was the caves in the wilderness of En Gedi so that brings us to the end of our main text for tonight and we do not have time to get started with our series outline, but this is where we will start next week. Um, I'm going to leave this slide here just for a moment um, so that you can go ahead and record uh, these scriptures because this is where we will be next week when we get started. Next week we'll start um, series one, cave, isolation, posture, and inquiry. We want to talk about face knees and feet. Uh, David authored these three psalms from the cave of Adullam, uh, which were reflective of his relational posture with God, his position with God. And so we want to explore that um, so that we can take the spiritual lessons, glean those things, um, that as we're getting ready to take on this new posture or resurge back into society, we want to look at David's posture. He was on his face when he wrote Psalm 142. He was on his knees when he wrote Psalm 57. And then finally, he was on his feet when he wrote Psalm 34. And many of us, we did from, from March, I believe. Um, well, for us, it began in March. And so from March 
up until now, you know, we, we had this posture on our face that was that desperate posture with God. Then we, we were able to get ourselves together and, and we moved from that face posture to our knees. Um, it's, it's just a reflective of, you know, changing postures, reflective of gaining strength and, and confidence in God. And then finally, uh, David uh, really begins to, to really give God this adoration when he moves from face to knees to feet. Um, in his posture in talking to God. And so that's what we'll start next week. So get Psalm 142. You go ahead and start studying it because that's where we're starting our Bible study on next week. And so I looks like it is seven o'clock right on the dot. And so we're going to close. I want to thank and praise God for each and every one of you who were able to join us on tonight. Um, thank you for joining us for 30 minutes on wins. I know it's quick, um, but we're trying to make sure that we honor um, what we set out to do, which was to make sure that we gave everyone an opportunity um, to get involved in the word of God and time not be an excuse for why we don't study the word of God. And so 30 minutes, take 30 minutes out of your schedule, study the word of God with us on Wednesday nights, and we hope to see you on next week. So our closing song, we're just going to read it and then we're done. Psalm 5 says, give ear to my words, O Lord, consider my meditation. Hearken unto the voice of my cry, my King and my God, for unto thee will I pray. My voice shalt thou hear in the morning, O Lord. In the morning will I direct my prayer unto thee, and I will look up, for thou art not a God that hath pleasure in wickedness, neither shall evil dwell with thee. The foolish shall not stand in thy sight. Thou hatest all workers of iniquity. Thou shalt destroy them that speak leasing. The Lord will abhor the bloody and deceitful man. But as for me, I will come into thy house in the multitude of thy mercy and in thy fear will I worship toward thy holy temple. Lead me, O Lord, in thy righteousness because of mine enemies. Make thy way straight before my face, for there is no faithfulness in their mouth. Their inward part is very wickedness. Their throat is an open sepulcher. They flatter with their tongue. Destroy thou them, O God. Let them fall by their own counsels. Cast them out in the multitude of their transgressions, for they have rebelled against thee. But let all those that put their trust in thee rejoice. Let them ever shout for joy, because thou defendest them. Let them also that love thy name be joyful in thee, for thou, Lord, will bless the righteous with favor wilt thou compass him as with a shield thank you so much again we hope to see you next week this is bishop m precious fox with life impact church international ministries my email address is there my phone number is there you can text me or call me anytime shoot me an email um, with any insights questions reflections and we look forward to studying god's word together with you on next week God bless and good night.